Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Florida. On this Sunday in Atlanta, Sun Trust Park filling up Father's Day. And all across Major League Baseball, happy Father's Day. Of course, funds from this home run challenge and this weekend all to fight prostate cancer. And it's the Marlins and the Braves in what has been an entertaining weekend series so far. Lots of dads are here today. And let's hope the sun sticks around. And there's no rain. Hi, everybody. Rich Walls along with Todd Hollinsworth. Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you. To you as well. All right. Well, let's do this. Marlins and Braves, entertaining series so far. And for the fish, nice to have Justin Bohr back. He didn't start yesterday. He started in game one. He's impacted both games. Yeah, so much for a warm-up period right off the disabled list. No, 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 no. Justin Bohr right back at it. Turned around 95 a couple nights ago last night, yesterday afternoon. Big pinch hit. Great at bat there. Drove one into right field. So, yeah, Justin Bohr is back. It's just kind of a continuation of the great numbers he was putting up and definitely making his case for the All-Star game. And Bohr faced Mike fulton earlier. Bolte gets the start for the Braves. Bohr took him deep in a ball game that the Braves eventually won. So that's a good matchup. Tell me more about Mike fulton -Evich. Well, fulton is coming off a rough start. Gave up three home runs last time in D.C. So again, has been pitching well here at SunTrust Park, but again has had some issues of late. We'll see what he is. Can't get the ball down sometimes. We'll see if he can today. Great start for Jose Orenas last time out. Yeah, outstanding. Commanded both sides of the plate. Was very efficient. That's what you're always watching for when it comes to Urania. Watch the pitch count. When he's good, he's efficient. Ready to do this. The Atlanta Braves, the Miami Marlins, Justin Bohr in the lineup. Who's going to win this series? Fish got game one. Braves a big comeback. Got game two. This will be game three. Brought to you by Jeep. Get great deals on the Jeep lineup at the Jeep Spring Clearance event. 
by the Florida Department of Transportation. Drive sober or get pulled over. By your local Toyota dealers, let's go places. And by Southwest Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. What a cool two ball games here. Our first uh, visit to SunTrust Park. Lots of exploring has been done and more today, I'm sure. Southwest brings you the starting lineups for Miami. D. Gordon leads it off. Giancarlo Stant hits second. Christian Yelich set a nice series. He's in center field. Marcel Ozuna in left. And Justin Bohr, big night in game one. Big pinch hit yesterday. Derek Dietrichs at third base. A.J. Ellis gets the start. He's seventh. J.T. Riddle is eighth, and Jose Ureña is slotted ninth. And there's Mike Fultonavich. Here is your scouting report, your AutoNation scouting report. Short-term memory, yeah, that's right. Last start, not a good one. Three and a third innings at Washington. 11 hits, eight earned runs, gave up three home runs and didn't strike anybody out. Had a very, very miserable time of it. Let's see if it plays into today. The Arsenal fastball slider, curveball change. He's got a very good fastball. Average is about 95 miles an hour. And keep an eye on all the lefties in the lineup today. 331 batting average against him. First lefty up, D. Gordon drives it to deep left center field. And Ender Inciarte runs it down and makes the catch. So one pitch, Gordon, who's had a really nice series. A long out. And you got Giancarlo Stan and Christian Yelich arriving here. Sun Trust Park. There's your replay up on the big board. Stanton climbs in. The Marlins have uh, had two good offensive games, and they've done it without uh, much contribution from either Giancarlo Stanton or Marcelo Zuna, for that matter. Stanton climbs in, 17 homers. And he pops that one up, first base side. Adams to the wall, and he makes a catch. Frustrating series continues for Stanton. Well, three pitches in, Fulton Davis able to get two outs. And his last start was a rough one against the Washington Nationals. About everything out of his hand was up in the zone, including his off speed pitches, but right back down in the zone so far. Here is Yelich. Christian Yelich yesterday, a two run double. Had a couple hits, drove in three in game one. What is it about lefty bats that uh, gives Fulton Evich so much problem? Well, I think it's that his, his fastball is his dominant pitch, his secondary stuff, which feeds into a left-hander, obviously being a righty, is okay. It's not great, his secondary pitches. This slider an all right, is an okay slider, statistically speaking. His changeup at times, he misses with it. So, again, very, very good fastball. It's always about his fastball command. When he's down in the zone, 95, 97 miles an hour, he's tough to hit. Yelich in the air, left center. That was quick for Fulton Evans. Six pitches, three outs. And this Father's Day game is underway in Atlanta.
chop is already in motion. Graves' lineup looks this way. And it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Cold series for Ender Inciarte, not so much for Brandon Phillips. He was the hero yesterday. Nick Markakis is a hit machine in right. Matt Kemp is back in, first start of the series. Matt Adams is having an all-star season. Kurt Suzuki gets a start behind the plate. Dansby Swanson, the youngster at shortstop. Rio Ruiz is hitting eighth, and Mike Boltinevich hits ninth. Jose Urania gets the start for the Marlins today. He is in a good little run right now. You see the record five and two, three seven zero oh, ERA is one his four last. Excuse me, last four starts pitching very well. His last start, even more impressive. Six solid innings, very efficient. Only the one earned run. Remember, he balked in that run. Ninety four pitches, sixty two strikes. Great fastball command. <laughs> Zips in a fastball. That was Chris Siegel. You heard the home plate umpire, Corey Blazer, Laz Diaz, and Doug Eddings. Now run support has been enormous for Urania because he really hasn't pitched that well until that Oakland start in that run of games that you talked about. Right. But the Oakland start may be his second best start all season long. Now there's always the one lane I talk about underneath the hand of the right hander away to a lefty batter. Can he command that side of the plate with his two seam fastball which is a great pitch now his four seam fastball gets hit a little bit more that's what you need to know get this so his four seam fastball hitters are hitting 375 against it but his two seam fastball only 140 but part of it is the movement that one on the ground to D Gordon and Arena has his first out. Here's Miami's defense behind Urania. Let's take a look at this Sunday afternoon, this Father's Day defense for the Marlins. Ozuna, Yelich, and Stanton have said that many times this year, and they're back out there again. Dietrich, Riddle, D. Gordon, Justin Moore back. A.J. Ellis gets the start behind the plate. Jose Urania on the mound. A.J. Ellis, boy, he's had a nice little run here himself. In fact, the Marlins are 9-3 and three in his starts, so good things going on there. Brandon Phillips now, if you were with us yesterday, it was a wild ride of a game. The Braves in the ball game jumped out to an early lead a three nothing lead Marlins then had a big fifth inning after Jaime Garcia was dominant and Miami took the lead actually had a seven three lead at one point and then the Braves led by Phillips came charging back and he swings and misses at a slider that's out not sure what type of swing that was he was badly fooled it's 0 and 2. Lucky he didn't come up with contact on that. There wasn't a whole lot of effort behind it. D. Gordon, good scouting report. On over to first. <laughs> and a couple of ground balls to second for Urania. Yeah, the Braves tied it in the ninth. AJ Ramos blew his first save of the season. Phillips had the double to open up that inning, and then he finished the deal. An RBI single in the 10th against Ramos yeah, who stayed in. Big part of the complications. The two, three, four, five hitters yesterday all had multi-hit efforts. Three hits for Phillips, three hits for Marcakis, two hits for Flowers, a home run. He's not in there today, but Matt Adams, boy, he's been swinging the bat. And here's Marcakis, who had the big day yesterday, three for five as well. <laughs> Nick Marcakis. Uh, since he joined the Braves has always hurt Miami and he's four for eight against Urania. Jam shot get it before it hits the base it just skimmed over second base riddle kind of slipped but he makes the play Hey, that's a nine pitch first inning.
wristbands, socks, lettering on the uniforms as well. Braves, uh, a great uh, uniform display. Who are in the uniforms defensively? Let's take a look at this Braves defense. Matt Kemp back out there after uh, missing a couple games with a hamstring. It's CRT out in center field. Marquecas and right. Ruiz, Swanson, Phillips, and Adams. Suzuki behind the plate for the Braves. Marcelo Zuna, it's uh, early action for the Marlins against Fultonevich. He's thrown only seven pitches. And Zuna firing at that first pitch fastball and the counts 0 and 1. Justin Bohr, Derek Dietrich will follow. And an inside corner, 95 miles an hour. And it's 0 and 2. Ozuna 0 for 7 in the series. He has walked three times. Braves and Marlins have split the first two. As the uh, fish have extracted themselves from the basement in the east. Now sit in second place and Ozuna goes down. Fulton Evich looks sharp early. And here comes Justin Bourne. Well, he's got the Marlins guessing right now just based on the, they've been, on, on the fact that they've been over aggressive here early. He's pitched very well at home, particularly over his last three starts. Only four earned runs. He's got a 403 ERA here at SunTrust Park. But that last start, I think I would have expected the Marlins to be a little more patient. That Nat start, eight earned runs, 11 hits, and three and a third innings. And again, really struggled with his command, had the ball up in the zone all day long with all of his pitches. It's a high strike. And it's a ball and a strike. Justin Bohr, second start since coming off the disabled list. Career numbers, a couple of homers, one this year against Fulton Evich. And Justin Bohr lines that into center field for a hit. How about that? His numbers, ever since that slow start, remember he opened the season, he hit 184 through 22 games. And since then, his average is over 375. Yeah, it's pretty amazing what he's been doing. But again, it's called sticking to the game plan and not missing your pitch. Once he found the rhythm of his swing, he's been able to execute it. And oh, by the way, a trip to the DL had nothing to do with it. Didn't slow him down one bit. Ten days gone. Here he is back hitting again. Three hits in this series already. That's more than Ozuna and Stanton combined. Derek Dietrich, first start of this series. And a strike. Miami saw Jaime Garcia yesterday and Sean Newcomb on Friday. And that gave uh, Christian Cologne a couple starts against the lefty. Dietrich pops that one up back behind second. Swanson. And there are two outs. And that brings up A.J. Ellis. The forecast today was for some chance of rain anywhere between 30 and 40 percent in the Atlanta area. Now if you've ever been to Atlanta you know there's a lot of area in Atlanta so <laughs> it has rained in Atlanta but not here. 82 degrees this is actually considered Atlanta I think zip code wise and tax wise even though it's about 15 miles uh, North of the old ballpark. Ellis is up. So far, the clouds have uh, been scattered and no moisture on the field, which is a good thing on Father's Day. And Ellis pops that one into right field. A lot of balls in the air against Fulton Evich here. Marcakis has it. And the right hander looks sharp for the Braves.
by the authority of the Miami Marlins and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and the descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Nothing like a good Sunday disclaimer, right? Got to be buttoned up, got to be legit, got to be legal on Father's Day. It is scoreless here. Lots of dads at the ballpark. Great tradition in baseball, as well as the uh, fight against prostate cancer. But if you go to MLB.com slash shop or MLB.com, you can purchase any of these jerseys, some of those stance socks, the caps, and the proceeds would go to fund prostate cancer research. Brian Snicker in the Atlanta Braves. Don Mattingly in the Miami Marlins. Matt Kemp, welcome back. Solid shot to left. He's meant so much offensively to this ball club. And I think around baseball, I think many people are surprised that the Braves have gotten what they've been able to get out of him. You know, he came here with some hip injuries and, and all of that, but he has hit and he has produced. Well, a little bit of a weight issue, I think. Uh, I remember hearing about at the end of last year, Braves wanted him to drop a few pounds, become a, a little bit more ath athletic uh, again. He's a great athlete, always was. He's answered everywhere he's been. I mean, that's the thing. It, it may not be years of greatness, but it certainly has been at least periods of greatness with every organization he's been with. Picked a good day to come back against Urania. Now six for eight against him with a home run. Here's Matt Adams. Big day yesterday. And he has really flourished as a brave. When you talk about dropping weight. Adams 30 to 35 pounds. Pilates is uh, one of the things he credits with uh, getting. I know that's uh, number one on your list <laughs> in the offseason. Yeah. But yesterday, his fingerprints were all over the ball game. Drove in four, two doubles, oh, two run been, homer. What's been impressive with Adam since his arrival, nine home runs and 25 RBIs, outstanding production. As if they traded for an all-star, uh, an MVP caliber player. He's been like Freddie Freeman. If Freddie, Freddie goes down and gets hurt, what are the Braves going to do at first base? Well, we'll just go find another Freddie Freeman out there. Here's Matt Adams playing great baseball, using the whole field. Two doubles yesterday, home run to left center field. There's Freddie. And then Adams swings and misses. Always looking for someone to hug. Look at the, the numbers that he's put up this year in just 37 games. And if you combine Adams and Freeman's numbers, the Braves' first baseman have hit 23 home runs this season. <laughs> Get the best first baseman in baseball. Oh. Oh. And Urania comes in and hits Adams. AJ Ellis right now is jawing with the Braves dugout. Someone in the Braves dugout was was yelling out to the diamond. And I think if you heard it at home, watch Ellis right here. came out and pointedly said to the Braves dugout hey there's a runner at first there's two strikes he's not there's, trying to hit him there's nobody out in the inning yeah he's not making trouble for himself Rania has uh, bouts of wildness we've seen it time before and obviously it's not a good time to hit Adams it's never a good time to hit somebody but with a runner at first and two strikes now it's first and second and he puts himself in a, a sizable hole here with Suzuki Swanson and then Rio Ruiz. Suzuki has had his moments offensively this year. He swings and misses. He and Tyler Flowers combined to I mean, we talked about first base for the Braves catcher has been a, a great spot offensively for Atlanta. Yeah they've kind of they've created a dynamic here in Atlanta that is somewhat popular around baseball. You're definitely starting to see it a little bit more. It's not necessarily you know your, your top eight guys you want to get 500 at bats from those eight guys you 
using your bench a little bit more, kind of looking for those platoons, the lefties and the righties. And I think for the Braves, they've been able to, because of where they're at, organizationally speaking, able to do this a little bit more. They were, you know, willing to take a, a roll of the dice on Brandon Phillips and obviously bringing in Matt Adams in. They put this together on purpose. They brought both these veteran catchers in to work with this young staff. Suzuki pounded that one off of his foot. His bat has cooled down of late. One of two major leaguers from Wailuku, Hawaii. Flying Hawaiian, Shane Victorino, same hometown. It's pretty cool. Suzuki did have a home run his last start, but that snapped an 0 for 19. Braves catchers a 393 on base with the Suzuki Flowers. 1 2 coming. And Urania hits Suzuki. And now the bases are loaded. And that will continue. I would expect the dialogue from the Atlanta dugout, but obviously Orania is not trying to hit Suzuki with runners first and second and nobody out. Certainly not. Now the bags are loaded. Well, this is the lane I talk about all the time, Rich. That exact lane. You see the two-seam fastball. It's why the batting average against is so good. When he cannot control his two-seamer to that part of the plate, you see right-handers dive bombing out of the way all the time. Watch Suzuki. Watch where they're supposed to go and watch where it ends up. Look at the action. See how it runs into his hands right there. It's got great running action on it. But again, he's got to be able to control it. He controls it because it's arm side to the lefties much better than the righties. Last start against Oakland, really, really good. So far today, it's caused him some trouble. And the hole is deeper now for Urania. Bags are loaded, and if the Braves are angry, and many of them are, they've got the perfect spot to take advantage of it, and that is score some runs. And Dansby Swanson climbs in the box, and Urania, who had a very brief First inning with three ground ball outs. Gave up the Kemp single. He hit Adams with two strikes. And he hits Suzuki now. Swanson one for seven in the series. Outside. Miami's infield plays double play depth. There's your rookie leaders. Of course, uh, Cody Bellinger didn't start the year in the big leagues nope. and yet he's still top the list of homers and RBIs for rookies. He's only one behind Thames. Check swing little roller Urania turns fires out there and I'll tell you what it's a heads up play by Urania for two reasons one he gets the out at home plate. I don't think he's going to get it out at first because Justin Bohr came off the bag to field that ball and there was nobody at first base. Yeah. Good decision right there, able to spin and make a nice throw to A.J. Ellis. You always work and worry about pitchers throwing to bases, particularly to home. This is not uh, something you practice all too much, but you see it right there. Great decision, good recognition on Urania's part right there, able to stand under control and get the out at home. So there's one out. Banks are still loaded. Game is still scoreless. There is Rio Ruiz. Line drive right to Riddle. And that's the second out. And now all the Reina has to do is get Fultonovich out, and he escapes. I think the amazing part about this is you're looking at it. He's only 23 pitches here in the in the second inning. At times we've talked about it. <laughs> There's the line out, you know, where his pitch count escalates and he, he, he climbs so fast it gets out of control. But right now, everything's well. He's one pitch away from getting out of this inning. Goodness, Fultonovich. Is 0 for 18 this year. But remember, Urania's already hit a couple of Braves, so anything can happen here. Fastball fouled off the screen. Good velocity for Urania. And you'd expect for Urania to really just stay on that outside lane, not the one that we've talked about, the one where he's hit 
two batters. I know he hit Matt Adams on that side of the plate. But that two seam fastball away from Fulton Evich, knowing that he's 0 for 18 on the season, just making sure that he doesn't hit him. Oh, and two. Yeah, you don't want anything in. in no, and he just, he, when Urania gets like this, he's got to be so careful. He He's a bulldog, but sometimes he's a little stubborn, and, and he knows he wants to establish that inside corner, and he'll stay with it, and it costs him a couple of hit batters or a couple of walks sometime. Not now, though. Oh, two. And if Urania does get out of this you know the Braves whose tempers are, are already flaring right now this is going to just frustrate them even more oh two got him Urania pitches out of it pitched himself into trouble and then extracted himself Figuratively and literally for Urania. In the end of the inning, as Urania passed by, Matt Adams was there. And just a brief uh, chat. Well, you never like to get hit with 96, regardless of the counter or, you know, trying to pick, you know, figure what, you know, intent. It doesn't matter. You, you don't feel good about it. But I think everybody understands he's not trying to create trouble for himself in those situations. I said it before he threw a pitch today. You got to watch that lane, right? What's he end up doing? He ends up hitting Suzuki with that pitch. Now, occasionally he'll yank one as well. We've seen it from him before. Well, both hit batters came with uh, two strikes, and right. they both came with runners on and nobody out. So there's no intent there. I don't think he's trying to put the Marlins in a hole here on Father's Day. He, he put <laughs> himself in a ball game. He put himself in a hole. Right. And, you know, the big out there to me was the line drive to Riddle off the bat of Rio Ruiz. Right. Here is Riddle with Urania and then D. Gordon to follow. Of course, the beauty of the National League is the pitchers have to hit. So Arrhenia is going to have to climb in the box himself. And Fulton Evich misses outside and it's 2 and 0. Oh. JT Riddle three more hits in this series had a couple in yesterday's ball game. That's good to see. JT one thing it's really been consistent since coming back to the Marlins his swing hasn't gotten out of his rhythm you know, he's gone through a little lull you know times were a couple games here and there where he didn't come up with any hits it hasn't changed his game it hasn't changed his approach there's a bat right there leadoff walk 
And of course that works perfectly for Miami because you've got Urania who can bunt here and is a pretty good bunter. Let's see how he handles it. Let's see how the Braves handle this. Three sack bunts on the season. Fastball in. It's all, I mean, look, that's the way the game is played, right? And that was my point. Well, in the National League, a pitcher has to come to the plate. Mm -hmm. But he doesn't want to hit him here and put runners first and second. Exactly. Well, and that, that's the that's the point here, is that if that's what they're willing to do, it's going to be the same situation. Are you, do you believe that you're going to get yourself out of a first and second, uh, nobody out inning? That's not that uncommon, even if anyone hasn't been hit. And that, oftentimes, in a bunt situation like that, you, you get someone that squares. You want it in on their hands. Yeah, and that's what's so interesting about baseball and hit batters and intent and figuring all this stuff out. You know, what's so interesting is the fact that a lot of times you've got to play the game first. There's a ring his bunt. It's a good one. Look out! Suzuki collides with Ruiz. Still makes the throw. Urania is out. But a good sacrifice has Riddle in scoring position. Suzuki has always been a very athletic catcher. In fact, he was the athletics catcher for a while. <laughs> Get your A game today. You're on it. I know. It's, <laughs> it's a day game after a, a, a night game, so I'm right. <laughs> just warming up. Well done. D. Gordon now. Gordon smoked one to the warning track in left center. Voltanovich has been wild here this inning. And his breaking ball misses. Five game hit streak for D. And five hits in the first two games of this series. Three stolen bases in the series as well. Riddle's going to take third. Safe. Just got in there. It's a base hit for Gordon. A gamble by Riddle, but not a bad one to take. Well, it tested the athleticism. Dansby Swanson, and that's the play right there. Had a good read, was able to get himself going and moving towards third base. The only play Swanson's got, he doesn't have a play at first base. No shot at D. Gordon there. Is the, the catch and throw quick release over to third right there. And JT Riddle moving all the way to get himself into scoring position, third base. Giancarlo Stanton popped up his first time. Now one for ten in the series. Chance to give the Marlins the lead here. Pitch was out, and Stanton pointed that out to Chris Siegel. Infield looking for two. Gordon! Oh, wow. That was close. D kind of drifted to the back of the bag to escape the uh, sweep tag of Adams. Nicely done. That's what you want to do. You want to stay to the outside part of the bag. Farthest point away from first oh baseman God. who's catching the ball. Ball and a strike. Sean Carlo one for ten in this series. A lot of balls in the air. Look how far out Suzuki is. Stan cuts and misses. As Fultonevich falls off the mound on his delivery. I was just thinking back to that first pitch slider that Giancarlo took for a ball outside the strike zone. It triggers that swing right there. He feels he has to protect against it. That whole right side is wide open. Stanton has found a lot of hits there. Of course, his usually end up either against the wall or over the wall. The Marlins have shown they are more than willing to run with Stanton up in the two spot and Gordon at first. D now has swiped 24 bags. Right. Three in this series. 
I think he's actually become more aggressive with uh, Giancarlo Stanton hitting behind him than what we saw earlier in the year. Now, part of that could be he's been on base an awful lot more, creating more opportunities for himself. But he's been on a great run. Picked up his 24th stolen base yesterday. Three in this series. 2-2. Two -two. It's a good take. And you don't want to limit yourself in those situations. You say, okay, well, when Stanton moves to the two-hole, D. Gordon can only do this, do this, this, and this. And, and, and the guys behind him should be doing this, this, and this. No, you don't want to think that way. You get Stanton into the two-hole. Everybody goes about their game the normal way. And with a full count and one out, odds are that Gordon is on the move. Riddles at third base. Fultonavich has gone over four times in this at bat, trying to keep Gordon anchored at first. He's running, and Stanton swings and misses. Suzuki's throw. He'll stop. Riddle is hung up. Phillips throw to the plate. Riddle's in a rundown, and he will be tagged out. And the Marlins' inning goes up in smoke. Will they strike him out, throw him out, double play? Um, he's just kind of been a soundboard. He's been someone that I can call to and trust and listen to throughout my career, throughout my life. Um, and I'm really grateful for that, to have him there and always have somebody I can call, you know, when things are going bad or when things are going good. He's Kyle Bearclaw, Father's Day thoughts and happy Father's Day to all of you dads out there. Here, Braves and Marlins, there's been drama in this ball game, but... Uh, no runs. Marlins have uh, a couple of hits. The Braves have one hit, and it's the second time through against Jose Urania. Outside! In Ciarte, Phillips, and Marcakis. Ciarte left center Ozuna and Yelich out on patrol and it's Ozuna who makes the catch. You can crush home runs and dominate in your very own derby competition in the official MLB.com home run derby game on the App Store and Google Play. Swing for the fences, back footed, pop the chain, all of those things. More than 10 million players from around the world your favorite home run derby on the App Store. Home run derby, it's for free. It's on the App Store. Here's Phillips, second time through. He bounced to second back in the first. Now, one thing the Marlins have been able to do all series long is keep Inciarte off base. Boy, he came in as one of their hottest hitters. 0 for 6 yesterday, 0 for 2 today. Liner right center Yelich there and he makes the catch. 
hit it well. Yelich ran it down. And up comes Mark Kikis. Yeah, nice break, nice read right there by Christian Yelich on that line drive by Brandon Phillips. Get back to that play yesterday in the ball game, that pop fly that Yelich broke back on. Good break right there. I will say the early impressions around baseball after April were that this was a launching pad. <laughs> now, like, like the old part. Like the old, old, old part. Old, old, two ago, right? Two stadiums ago. But having watched a, a series here now and, and looking at the numbers from mid May on, the ballpark is starting to even out a little bit. It's not as. Uh, well, it actually ranks with Marlins Park right now. So, what well, your thoughts on Marlins Park as far as the home run hitters park? That's where you go. I mean, that's. It, it's still early. Again, so much of this conversation on what a park is supposed to do or how it's supposed to play is built around data from years. Remember, a lot of what you see is what the Braves are right now. Think about this. When you say it's not a home run hitters park, well, they've been without Freddie Freeman for an extended period of time. It's a good hitters park, though. Everybody seems to be raving about it. One and two on Marcakis, who was three for five yesterday. Marcakis kind of was the uh, the Daniel Murphy of the American League until he came over to Atlanta always a steady 300 average high on base. He's only 36 hits shy of 2000 hits for his career. And he's just in his 12th season in the big leagues. And if you look at all the players that came in in that year he's ahead of Ian Kinsler he's ahead of Dustin Pedroia. Two guys certainly who have drawn more headlines and more accolades than Marcakis. Uh, the word uh, to describe his career, would you would you agree with steady? Uh, I mean, I think that's kind of how he's viewed in the game. And there's people out there that think he should be hitting for a little bit more power. Wow, another one. That one was a breaking ball. Slider. And another with two strikes. Yeah, so all, three, all three of them with two strikes. All three batters hit with two strikes. Yeah, back foot breaking ball, which is actually back a knee. back knee breaking ball. Well, the Braves are, are already a bit ornery because of the two that were hit in the second inning. Both those came with a runner on base and two strikes and in without anybody out as well. And so here's Kemp. And so far, Urania has hit three. Kemp rolls one out to short, riddle around it, on over to first in time. Jose Urania is wild today, but so far it hasn't hurt him.
League Baseball, and of course, uh, fundraising, all part of it. Marlins and Braves are scoreless here, top of the fourth. The home run challenge has been a tradition in baseball, and we've got it going this game. Every home run and strikeout raises money for prostate cancer research. And since June 1st, $3.3 million already has been raised. Now, it comes with your help. You can make a pledge and a donation. Go to homerunchallenge.org and be part of raising money for prostate cancer research. We have with us in the booth Dr. Jonathan Simons, President and CEO of the Prostate Cancer Research Center in Los Angeles. Dr. Simons, look at you. You're all set. You've got the jersey going. <laughs> You've got the wristbands going. Looking good. The, like the umpires. The ribbon going yep. as well. Yep. Tell us, and, and Michael Milken, who is, has been uh, such a, a big part of this and still is, um, you guys come out to all the major league parks to, to talk to us. We've been watching the players with, with the blue caps and the blue shoes, the wristbands, everybody participating. Yelich in a center field. What difference has all of what Major League Baseball has done? What difference has it made in the fight against prostate cancer? Uh, since the partnership got created 23 years ago, the death rate from prostate cancer in the United States has been reduced by 52%. And we estimate, thanks to awareness from the Home Run Challenge, and the Prostate Cancer Foundation, and Major League Baseball Partnership, we estimate 1.5 million men's lives have been wow. rescued from prostate wow. cancer. Big number. And for research, which is my area, uh, the, the partnership's raised over $47 million. So it's been huge, um, huge for awareness because uh, prostate cancer is one in eight men, the same numbers basically as breast cancer in women. Huge for awareness. Uh. Into right, that's Markakis, and he's all the way back to the wall to make the catch. Yelich dashes back to first base. Huge, huge for medical research as well, and we we expect. Uh, to see four more FDA approved drugs in the next three years if prostate cancer comes back is quite extraordinary. Um, uh, we're on the threshold really of putting prostate cancer in the history books. Wow. And that's not overstating. Wow, so that is, that's amazing. So, so leaps and bounds over the last few years. Yeah. Uh, Michael Milken, who created the foundation 23 years ago and is still the active chairman and founder with a bunch of owners, uh, Mr. Luria being a great partner, the Marlins being wonderful for prostate cancer awareness in Florida and the region. Uh, all these are um, a part of keeping Father's Day about having more fathers around. And I know Joe, Joe Torrey has been very active uh, right. in leading the charge for Major League Baseball. Yeah, um, we have two Hall of Famers, Joe Torrey and uh, uh, John Sherholtz is going to the Hall of Fame, both uh, doing uh, w wonderfully, but both being very um, public about their experience with prostate cancer and spreading the word. Justin Bohr with a line drive out to short, hit it right on the nose. All right, so if if uh, if a fan wants to donate, uh, we, we showed the, the website. Um, what else can someone do out there that's watching to, to, to help in this fight? Uh, in addition to going to homerunchallenge.org, giving a dollar, uh, two dollars, and going towards home runs hit during the month, you can go on and learn about how to have a conversation with an uncle or a grandfather or a father or a boyfriend or a husband about once a year being checked. And because African Americans are twice as likely to get prostate cancer and the disease is uh, more aggressive, um, uh, at 45, every man should be checked in the United States of America if have African descent. If you have it running in your families, uh, a man should be, actually have a prostate cancer checkup at 40. So there's more information at uh, pcf.org, the Prostate Cancer Foundation.org, or at mlb.com. So, and I would I would expect with this research, preventative methods um, and procedures have come so far in in a very short time. There, um, and um, there are 147 forms of cancer. Uh, so there's a lot of oncology, but prostate cancer now is 99 percent survival at five years in the United States, and we're continuing to do more research in reducing the side effects. Dr. Jonathan Simons, thank you for all that you do. Um, with, Good luck with, with the rest. Thank, thank you for the Marlins. Yeah. You got it. Thank you so much to the Marlins. Good stuff. In the Marlins country. Thanks.
Baseball in Fox Sports Florida is brought to you by Jeep with great deals on the Jeep lineup at the Jeep Spring Clearance Events and by your South Florida Chevy dealers. Score this ball game bottom four. Jose Urania is back out there. And the Braves come to the play with Matt Adams, Kurt Suzuki, and Dansby Swanson. Adams swings and misses. Atlanta's had opportunities in this one. They had the bags loaded and nobody out in the second. Did not score. Adams launches one left center. Yelich in pursuit is there. And on the track, he makes the catch. So an out here in the fourth. It's been a wild day, though, for Urania, who has hit three Atlanta Braves. Now, on the surface, that sounds shocking. And you would think that uh, the Braves would have charged them out or retaliated or something like that. But the circumstances behind it, all three were with two strikes. Two of them came with a runner on and nobody out. And so in those circumstances, and of course one of them was a breaking ball, it just seems that Urania is wild. Yeah. Well, that's why warnings haven't been issued at this stage of the ball game. You look at it and say, oh, well, how come something hasn't happened? How have the umpires not taken over? Well, first of all, no Marlin has been hit. But the fact that the circumstances don't lead you to believe more or read into it more than, than really what it is. He made a huge mess for himself in that second inning. Now, was he able to get out of it by being at the bottom of the lineup? Sure he was. Ends up putting another guy with a breaking ball on a two-strike pitch. Well, I don't think anybody's going to argue that either. Kurt Suzuki, for the second time today, pounds one off his foot. Now he's got a, a pad on there, but it, it still hurts. He's fouled two balls off himself. He's been hit by a pitch, and we're only in the fourth inning. Yeah, the two hit batters in the second actually loaded the bases with nobody out. He hit Adams and he hit Suzuki. He was able to get out of trouble. Rolled over on a breaking ball. Dietrich sliding, throwing, got him. Well done. That's a play that Dietrich makes quite well. And I'm sure it's his middle infield uh, pedigree because that's a shortstop type play where you, you slide and spin and make the throw. Well, it's masterfully done. What it is, it's not only securing it, but it's actually after he comes up with the baseball, the ability to get back on his feet and come up with a, with, with a strong throw across the diamond is where he's making this play. He's done it beautifully over the last couple of weeks. A couple of nice balls in the hole. He gets up so fast and lines his shoulders up, and then it's the strong arm behind it as well. Dansby Swanson takes a fastball for a strike. One for eight is Swanson. We've talked about this uh, young shortstop, such a, a prized prospect, and still is. This is his rookie season. Come on. And how close he was to getting sent down, hitting well below 200 for much of the early part of the season. He's bounced back with an impressive June, hitting well over 300 this month. The one thing they've said from the Braves side of things on Swanson, yes, the bat maybe hasn't been there, hasn't been as consistent, but his defense hasn't gotten away from him. This hasn't been a classic example of the young player starting to struggle with the bat, taking the at-bats out on defense. Next thing you know, the defense isn't as good as it needs to be. He's done a very nice job separating the two, even though he's been a little slower with the bat. Of course, the Braves got uh, Swanson, Ender Inciarte, and Aaron Blair for Shelby Miller. In a trade that right now tilts decidedly Atlanta's way. Arizona Diamondbacks are playing better baseball this year, but it's Shelby Miller has not been a part of that. Swanson lines at left field. Ozuna is there, and he makes the catch. And Arrhenius through four. Scoreless duel here in Atlanta.
Braves Monument Garden. Today I want to focus on the area specifically dedicated to the legend that is Hank Aaron. Aaron spent 21 seasons in a Braves uniform. He was a 25 time all star. Throughout the course of his career, he hit 755 home runs. Now there's a cool display over here that the Braves have to honor that accomplishment. It's made up of 755 bats to represent each home run that Hank Aaron hit. All right, thank you, Jessica. Yeah, there's a lot of Henry Aaron uh, in and around this ballpark, and there really should be. The, uh, the legend of the Braves, the uh, greatest player to ever put a Braves uniform on. 733 of those homers were as a Brave. Remember, he finished with the Brewers. He had 22 with the Brewers. AJ Ellis in the count one and two. And it's two balls, two strikes. Now Mike Fultonevich has uh, had a few moments where his control has left him. Leadoff walk to Riddle in the third. Well, AJ riding a four game hitting streak coming into this one. Swing the bat much better. In fact, a lot of the utility guys, a lot of the backups have been swinging the bat much better now that they've gotten a little more playing time. It's funny how that works. And we've talked about for Don Mattingly, the predicament, especially when the ball club was in that rut of uh, dropping 20 of 25. It's hard to find time when all of a sudden it, it seems like every game is a you got to win to stop the snowball. Right. Two two. That was uh, peppering. That defense above the dugout of the uh, Braves dugout. Uh, fighting off 97 mile an hour fastballs left and right. It's kind of giving me that feeling of uh, 14 pitch. At bat against the. Have I forgotten already? That one popped first base side. Diamondbacks probably. The <laughs> Diamondbacks, AP. Yes, thank you. The legend, the, where the legend was built, right? This is the ninth pitch of the at bat. Well, he continued to fight off pitch after pitch after pitch after pitch until he got something he could handle. Doing it once again right here. You see it up to nine. Of course, this does not have nearly the same. Importance yet. Well, the Marlins would certainly like to get things going here in the fifth inning. No, but the at bat is young. It's only nine pitches in. <laughs> only halfway there. Riddle on deck, and then you've got Urania. Bottom third against Fulton Nevich here in the fifth. <laughs> He's fouled off another. He's above the average. The average major leaguer sees almost four pitches. For plate appearance. I'd like to know what that number would look like. Take away the 14 pitch AB. <laughs> A liner to short. So an 11 pitch hit bat. And Ellis lines out for the first out of the fifth. Fox Supports is proud to team up with Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes, better people by working to provide all youth. And high school athletes, a positive character building sports experience. Visit foxsupports.com to learn more. JT Riddle. Riddle walked back in the third. Today's ball game, Fulton Avich good at putting bad results or a bad start behind him. He's traditionally done that here with the Braves. So far this afternoon, that has been the case. Coming, coming off one of his worst outings of his career. 
11 hits allowed. Three home runs. Yeah, you see it right there. Two walks, no strikeouts, only 75 pitches, but he was absolutely peppered by the Nationals. No signs of that today. That ball raced inside. It may have even caught the corner, but it, it yanked Suzuki so far from the outside to the inside. It's a tough, tough optics for an umpire. Yeah, Watch where funny. this ends. It's funny how that works, right? It wasn't in, it was just low. Real little roller. Adams to the back. Here comes Urania. Well, Urania, a sacrifice bunt in the third. And Fulton Avish climbs to the hill. You see the first step from Urania? I did. <laughs> he was stepping out of the box. I think he expects something in. in well, the let, let's give the message to everybody out there. They're thinking along like we are. I mean, he's hit three guys in this ball game today. Yes, there was not been intent. There have not been warnings, but I think you saw that step outside for a very specific reason. Now 2-0. Sends Markakis back, and he makes the catch. Father's Day, no runs yet. Halfway through. He always told me just try hard at everything I do, you know, and if you can look in the mirror at the end of the day when it's over and say, you know, I gave everything I could and, and be okay with that, then you did what you could. Dad, happy Father's Day. Love you. Good stuff from the Fred Hutchison Award winner, Dustin McGowan. 25th anniversary of a, a fan favorite, the movie A League of Their Own, and the Marlins uh, are supporting girls in sports and are celebrating with this very special day. When you purchase a special event ticket, you'll get a commemorative T-shirt and relive some of your favorite scenes from the hit movie. There is no crying in baseball. A league of their own. Get your tickets at marlins.com slash special events. And that's Sunday, June 25th. A 110 start Cubs at Marlins. So Jose Urania is back up on the mound. 
Braves and Marlins. They have yet to touch home plate. Rio Ruiz, Mike Fultonevich, and Ender Inciarte. That is uh, Craig Sager's widow, Stacy Sager, here at the ballpark. Rio Ruiz takes a strike. Craig Sager, of course, the longtime uh, Turner, TNT, TBS. NBA you know, sideline analyst, college football, NFL, did it all. And the iconic presence on the sideline. Last September, lost his battle with cancer. Luis, count two and two. And Arrange strikes him out. In some ways, and the, this is in no way advocating this, but in some ways, Urania is a throwback guy in terms of pitching inside. Now, he doesn't quite have the, the control that some of the, the guys of yesteryear, 20, 25 years ago, did. But you can almost see it in some of the brave swings now, and that they're not all that steady in the box. There's a little moving around. He's been pretty good. It's what you get when you throw 96, 97 miles an hour. But yes, you're absolutely right. The, the phrase "effectively wild" gets applied today, and I think that's that's who Urania is. I mean, I use the word "fearless." And listen, his teammates love playing behind him. I know that. He wants to get out there. He wants to throw strikes. He throws to both sides. He doesn't back down. But certainly understood. You know, even what happened a little earlier in this ball game. But. You throw 98, yeah, that'll get a hitter's attention. It'll make your feet move a little bit if he hits a few guys. But of course, he could have buried himself with his wildness today when he, uh, after giving up a single, well, hit, hit two guys to load the bases and nobody out. That's the point of effectively wild. This is the same guy that can make a mess and get himself out of it. It speaks to what he's got, his arsenal, his stuff. So at the run score, he's not effectively wild. He's just wild. He's just wild. That's exactly right. <laughs> he's ineffective. Well, wild. think about the effect in this ball game. You were just talking about uh, some tap dancing going on with maybe some brave hitters. Well, I mean, what do you see is what you get. It gets your attention. That's the way it works. Swing and a miss. Fultonavich strikes out. All right. Currently on Fox, the U.S. Open is going on. And there's your leaderboard entering the uh, final round. All these uh, on the leaderboard are just about to tee off and start this uh, final Sunday. Right now, this ball game is even par. It is. Come out, come out. Although nobody is wearing orange pants like Ricky Fowler. Liner to right, Stanton. Oh, it drifted on him. Giancarlo made the adjustment, and Jose Urania has set down seven straight. This is a scoreless ballgame still.
Father's Day, everybody. Sixth inning. Let's do some Geico here. This date in Major League history, 2005. Only grand slam of his 20-year Major League career. Sixth inning blast against Joe Borowski. Jobo. How about it? Our good friend Joe Borowski. D. Gordon, John Carlos Stanton, Christian Yelich. Well, D's had a very nice series, six for 12. To get things started here in the sixth inning. It's amazing that Derek Jeter would hit his first and only career grand slam. That's it. Liner to center field. D. Gordon's aboard. Second hit for Gordon. Only the fourth hit for Miami. I'll tell you what, don't you dare throw back to back pitches of the same type to D. Gordon right now. He'll make you pay for one of them. Typically, that second one, he's shown a little bit more patience with back to back sliders right there. Stayed on the second one. Watch this. Yeah, see, nice job right there. And his aim has been center field over this entire trip, these entire three days here in Atlanta. Went all the way back to batting practice, early work on Friday, just shooting the ball the other way consistently to produce seven hits in this series. Giancarlo is 0 for 2. Gordon away from first. Stan fouls it back, and he's behind 0 and 2. He's not had uh, good swings against Fulton Evich today. Now remember Gordon was running with runners at the corners in a full count and one out to Stanton. Stanton struck out. Gordon stopped and JT Rilla was caught in a rundown. with a fastball He's trying to see if he'll expand his strike zone once again that has been a little bit of an issue here in this series for Stanton and getting back to the old days Stanton right now just trying to have a productive at bat Maybe move D Gordon into scoring position fastball up and in and so now we're back in that same spot almost obviously there's nobody at, at third but it's a full count Gordon at first and Stanton against Fulton Evich. He swings wildly and misses. Well, right now, Stanton has found himself in one of those ruts. He's not sure where the outside corner is right now. You see him pulling off just a little bit. Fulton Evich gets that when you throw that hard. You saw the 98 mile an hour fastball at the top of the zone. Then the willingness to go back outside with the slider again. Remember, he did pick up a couple of sliders off the outside corner for strikes early in the ball game. It's really gotten Giancarlo in a kind of a pickle. Yelich rips one to right. That's going to get in for a hit. Gordon to second. That was a tough read for D, I think, for everybody. Marcakis got a decent jump on the ball. It was hanging up and it just died for a hit. Well, and I think that's sometimes what you see happen here on a ball. You think left-handed hitter, you know, rocketing one into the gap. That ball actually had a little fade towards the center field side. Now, what did Christian Yelich do? He cut the ball off. He pulled his hands through, but it was actually working away from Marcakis. So D. Gordon had to make sure that ball was not caught before trying to advance. Another opportunity for the fish. First and second. Ozuna. And right now, Fultonevich is getting swings and misses on his secondary stuff. Yeah, it's because everybody's on red alert. What I mean by that, the fastball certainly has been a big part of his arsenal today, early in this game. Sliders working wonders right now. Many times we watched Ozuna make the adjustment that third at bat. See if he can do it now, down two strikes. Kazuna actually just called timeout. I think he was so 
off balance and so out of sorts on that last swing. Yeah, sometimes I call timeout. You know why? Because I have to have a meeting with myself. <laughs> What would you tell yourself? Well, don't swing at sliders off the outside part of the plate. Goes right back out there again to find out if he'll do it. That's it. We watched him do this yesterday. In fact, I think it was his last at bat. Got it all the way back to a 3-2 count. Laid off three of them, but couldn't lay off the fourth. See what Marcelo Zuna can do. Yeah, sometimes you got to have that meeting with, you, with yourself in the box. You got to start talking to yourself up there. He gets another slider. Yep. So they count two balls and two strikes. In fact, you mentioned that last at bat yesterday, earlier in the game, yesterday afternoon, Ozuna was down 0 2, worked the count back full, and then ended up walking. Good speed. Gordon and Yelich out there in a, a rare fastball. And so now it's three and two. What do you expect is headed Ozuna's way here? I'm going to guess he's probably going to go fastball away here. He certainly doesn't want to load the bases. Throw your best breaking ball if you think he's going to swing. And you can control it. But I think the two sliders that you saw in the dirt earlier, yes, there was some intent there, but I also believe that he doesn't have full control of it right now. You probably see him lean on that 98 mile an hour fastball. Three two again. Fastball up and there you go. From 0 2 to ball four. It's not easy to do. And Ozuna does it again. And that gives the uh, Marlins. Not only the bags loaded but the guy that's had the best swings today at the plate and that's Justin Bohr a line drive single and a line drive out. Yeah the other way so uh, again all over Fulton Avich has got good numbers against him coming into the day has lived up to those good numbers and again now has a big opportunity here because of a great at bat by Marcel Azuna. That's sometimes how important a walk can be. You see it sets the table gets the big guy up here and an opportunity to break this game wide open. And Brian Snicker now is coming out to the mound and he's got a trainer with him. So this is uh, an interesting visit. Of course the home plate umpire Chris Siegel is there just to listen in. That is a blister conversation certainly with the way everybody was looking at him. Braves bullpen has started to activate. Jim Lovell Braves assistant trainer making a, a special guest appearance on the show. Big moment in this ballgame sixth inning here's Bohr. Those are the career numbers since coming off the disabled list. Three for six all good swings. A homer and two RBIs. Now the middle infield's back for two. Not a big shift against Bohr here. And the big fella takes a rip at a 96 mile an hour fastball. Fulton David some credit right there. Went right at him. Challenged him right out over the plate with high velocity. Said I don't care about those numbers. I don't care about the swings. I got to get out of this. Breaking ball, Bohr pops it up, but it's going to get out of play. And Fulton Evich is out in front, 0-2. Well, that's a good foul ball right there. You say, what are you talking about? A good foul ball. Well, Justin Bohr was fooled by that slider. Certainly out on his front foot, didn't get a very good pass at it. Would have put it in the seats. Better there than popping it up to the infield. We have to battle here now with two strikes. Up the middle, base hit, center field, Gordon scores. Yelich right behind him, throw to the plate, and he is in there with a slide right up against the umpire, Chris Siegel, and Justin Bohr continues to deliver. <laughs> Tries to sneak it. 0 2 fastball by the big guy. My goodness, he has turned on some velocity this year and 
certainly in this series. Great swing. Talk exit velocity with Justin Bohr all the time. This is a rocket off the bat. Marlins up 2 0. And all that triggered by the Marcelo Zuna at bat. You see it right there. Pitch up in the zone, able to drive it right back through the middle. Great slide by Christian Yelich. So he makes his way home, going to the back corner, able to slide past and touch it with the left hand. That was a pretty good throw by Enciarte. Now you got Dietrich. Ozuna, that second bore at first. Braves bullpen, active. Yelich has a couple hits. Gordon has a couple hits. Bohr has a couple hits. And of course, the common thread there is what Todd pointed out early in the game. And it's the, been the lefties that have hurt Fulton Evans. Yeah, 331 coming into today's ballgame. And you see it. They thought it was good matchups today. Both Gordon, Yelich, and Bohr, all three swing the bat particularly well. So it's led to the scoring in this one. Six full counts for Fulton Evich. Marlins have worked the count quite well. Have the first two runs of this ball game. That's in the right field. That's a hit. Charging is Marquecas. Good arm, and Ozuna's held. Bags loaded for Ellis. It's a bat right there by Dietz. We'll pick on a fastball and rip it into right field. Chuck Hernandez, the pitching coach for the Braves. There it is. Nice swing of the bat. Good size hole over on the right side. He's getting it done. All seven of the Marlins hits today by their lefties. You see the pitch count 25 this inning. That first inning went by in the blink of an eye, and he was really sharp second, third, fourth. Or maybe AJ can give him one of those long, lengthy at bats that he likes to do. And he had an 11 pitch at bat earlier. His last at bat. He ended the at bat by lining out to shortstop. Now, traditionally, advantage goes to the hitter the more pitches you see, and so far for AJ, he's proven that theory right. Time he's had more than 10 pitches in it at bat. It usually ends up in a line drive. It's a good take right there for AJ. To foul that pitch off three or four times in that little, excuse me, that 11 pitch at bat he just had. Now one and two here. And he's been so good at this, just putting bad on ball. Now there's one theme in this inning for Fulton Avich. We talked about struggles last time. Oh, Ooh, strike three called. Ellis didn't like it. Steps back. Has a word with Chris Siegel. And let's take a look. And he had a beef. Yeah, that's inside. Does not catch that inside line there. Fox tracks. Close pitch. It's a big pitch for Fulton Evich. It certainly is. Able to get it down. That's what I was getting at right there. You've seen this inning for Fulton Evich. Uh, again, last time his last start, his struggles in D.C. Ball up in the zone. A lot of pitches up this inning. Riddle takes a strike. One more crack at adding on right here. 
Good opportunity for JT. As I mentioned, the lefties really starting to do damage. Now 30 pitches in the inning. It can't be easy to hold your swing on a 97 mile an hour fastball. Cannot. Never was good at it. You're looking at the wrong guy. I never did. That was always the peel of the third, and they'd always go like that. Look down there and give him a nasty look, and they'd give me a nasty look back. Riddle in the air. Marquecas and Inciarte, and it's Marquecas who makes the catch. Miami gets two, though, and starts the scoring late in this ball game. Two nothing. At SunTrust Park, one thing that you can't miss are the life-size bobbleheads of Braves legends. There are guys like John Smoltz, Greg Maddox, Bobby Cox. There are a total of 10 bobbleheads for each Braves number that has been retired. Guys, I think I found my favorite one. It's going to be Chipper Jones because check out that rock and roll stance. And if you remember, Chipper's walk-up song was crazy trained by Ozzy Osbourne. So I think this is a perfect representation of Chipper Jones. I would say so. In fact, last time we saw Chipper Jones, he was on a snowmobile rescuing Freddie Freeman on a bobblehead. Now, throughout this uh, weekend, blue stitching, light blue stitching, very cool on the baseball, a little different than the red stitching. I don't know that that would make a difference for a hitter, but I'll turn to one and ask. I think it would. Really? I, I do. If not just for the normalcy of what you're used to hitting against, you know, it being red. I mean, the blue is definitely, a, at least to my eye, again, again I'd have to see a, you know, a few more of them. Um, you know, the light blue, it does look a little bit lighter. Does that explain the lack of offense today? I don't know. No, I, 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 <laughs> I don't think so. I yeah, mean, either. But I, I, I do think that those probably a little yeah. harder to pick up. Of course, my argument's always the day game. So any any players that are playing in a day game, they're never easy. <laughs> the body. Ask Brandon Phillips how he feels today about today's day game. He'll tell you oh, 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 the day game. Three and one to Brandon Phillips. He's 0 for 2. Nick Marcakis, Matt Kemp. Good hitters here for the Braves lined up in the six against Urania. This has been a trouble spot for Urania once he get past that fifth inning. He's into the sixth. And he misses and walks Phillips to lead off the sixth inning. Let's take another look. Oh, right there. 
Borderline pitch. Looks like it does. Certainly catch the lower part of the strike zone right there. Well, either way, Reina, his pitch counts at 68. Here in the sixth, he's going to have to navigate top of this Braves lineup. Marquecas hit by a pitch and bounced out. Now remember, he, he passed the sixth inning with flying colors, whether they were light blue or the regular red. His last time out against Oakland, six innings, a run, three hits. One of the best starts of the year for him. You know, one thing he doesn't really have to worry too much about. Occasionally, Brandon Phillips will run, but I doubt it now. Remember, the Braves are down 2 nothing. Down two and one. Remember, Miami had the lead in the late innings last night. Whenever you describe a four o'clock game, it's always a challenge. You never know whether to say it was yesterday or last night. Now, the Marlins had that two run lead last night because they didn't get the lead till about six o'clock. Isn't that the evening, though? It's got to be day or night, right? Yeah. yeah. It's no evening. All right. Up the oh, Rainey got a glove on it. Fires for one. Riddle's turn is in time. I had that ball getting by him, and I was just about to say up the middle, and the glove went down. Not sure what he, if he got it with the glove or it hit his leg. Let's look. I think it's the trap door. He got his glove on it. Woo. Yeah, knocked it down right there blindly, and not only did he knock it down, he got two. How about it? Yeah, watch this. He's going to spin around. Watch the trap door. Uh-uh, not through here, right? That's like mini golf. <laughs> Except he didn't get through. He got denied. Reina, nice throw to second base. That's always the key to those plays. You hear me talk about it all the time. You make a great play or a great stop, you have this desire to panic. Get rid of the ball faster. You know, you know, everything starts moving a million miles an hour. He didn't panic right there. See Mike Kozak go out there. Make sure everything's okay. Cozy. And it is. Even the trainers have the uh, the light blue Father's Day stuff going. Mm -hmm. So good to see right there. Didn't panic. Nice strong throw to second base and able to turn that double play. That's a huge double play. The two biggest deep, uh, defensive game uh, plays in this game, he said. Were turned in by Urania. Remember the, the bases loaded dribbler where he got the out at home? And that was with nobody out. His ability to throw to the bases. We talk about it. We always assume it. You know, these are big leaguers. These are guys they should be able to do this, right? This is their profession. Throw the ball to the bases. It's not the easiest thing for pitchers. They do not always throw the ball well to bases. You know, they spend most of their time, 90% of their time, on their craft, which is pitching. Yeah, throwing downhill. Right. It's not easy to do. You factor in adrenaline, you factor momentum. Like, I still go back to the play at the plate. I think it's an absolutely incredible play because he didn't panic. You, know, you bounce off the mound, you have a chance to save a run, and, and you know you have to throw a strike. But here's the deal. You can't throw it past your catcher. you got to throw it right to him from about 30 feet. <laughs> I used to have this problem all the time, playing catch with D. Lee. Even myself as an outfielder, I had trained my arm to you know throw long all the time. D and I used to go out into the outfield and get loose, you know, you know to play. And uh, I, I would always air, air mail the first one because it was a short throw. I, I just couldn't couldn't do it. So I got to the point where I just kind of lob it at him until he got far enough back to where I could get my arm going. We saw that the other day with Christian Yelich, who had a, a short throw. Hard to do. Yeah, it is really hard for guys. You, know, you train yourself to throw, to get long, to take the ball off the shelf. and you know let it go to really shorten up and, and and make that throw especially when you don't practice it very often pitchers outfielders now middle infielders that's something they do a lot more often 
Matt Kemp not going quietly into the uh, sixth inning here. Shouldn't be surprised at that good numbers against Urania throughout his career. Base hit today as well. Six for nine overall. In fact, the only hit for the Braves is the Matt Kemp base hit. There's Adams. Urania would love to finish the inning here, not have to face Adams with the runner on. Kemp stays alive. Count three and two. Tenth pitch of the at bat. And it's under his hands. And Matt Kemp. And a 10 pitch at bat walks. And now you got Adams coming up. And that's a dangerous spot. The Nationals are coming. Tomorrow night, 6 30 for Marlins Live. 7 o'clock, first pitch. Tanner Roark, Justin Nicolino, your starters. Craig Minervini and Jeff Nelson will be on site, on set. Under the bright lights, South Florida Honda dealers and Marlins live. AJ Ellis to the mound. Juan Nieves follows. That's a good meeting right here. Certainly don't want to make a mistake to the Atlanta Braves' hottest hitter. Growing up, Rich. Watching Urania right now, learning how to navigate it. 80 plus pitches, tough hitters in the Braves lineup. Think back to that Oakland start. This is what he did so well. Really turned the corner, able to, on, the, on his ability to extend the start. He's in a good range right now, still only at 85 pitches. Adams a high pop-up that will find the seats. Now Matt Adams didn't just turn the corner when he went from the Cardinals to the Braves. 31 games with the Cardinals, one home run. Nine homers in 26 games since making his Braves debut on May 21st. Two doubles and a homer yesterday. That's strike three calls. A little bit of a delay. Chris Siegel thought it caught the letters. Adams with an argument. And Arena up to nothing.
it's strike three. Here's a look at the pitch, and we'll Fox track it to see where it ended up. That is right at the letters. That's a strike, and Chris Siegel stuck the call. Now, Matt Adams didn't like it, but his manager really didn't like it. And Brian Snicker, angry, and he was ejected from the ballgame. This was between innings. And he came out, got his money's worth as well. You know, that's one of those where the, the machine doesn't lie. Umpires are graded on that box. They're graded on the technology. Both clubhouses have the Fox tracks, whether it's on the MLB app or whether they're watching a, a game telecast. So it's right at the letters, and it's a strike. And so the Braves were without their skipper, and now they're without Mike Fultonevich because Sam Freeman comes in. Jose Urania leads it off. And a fastball, a strike. That good arm for Sam Freeman. Does not throw 105. Does throw 93 to 95. Good numbers on the season. 2790 RA. I'm just kidding. Just a couple nights ago, and the <laughs> radar gun was a little off. Urania rolls it up the middle. Swanson on to first. T Mobile. Unlimited baseball break. Another milestone for uh, Albert Pujols. Another top 10 all time RBI list. Look at that. He's uh, got 1,865 runs driven in. It's 10th all time. He's now ninth on the home run list. And not far from done. I mean, it, I like over the last couple of years, it's been this idea that you know, Pujols is somewhere near the end. I don't think he's anywhere close to the end. Oh, he's going to climb. He's got a long way to go. It's probably his health talking, I guess, in my mind. A lot of leg injuries of late. Well, D. Gordon has had no such thing. Fantastic series. Getting on base regularly, stealing bases, and the multi hit games are starting to pile up for D as well. Seven hits in this series. Yeah, and with that, the, the on base percentage continues to rise. Getting closer to 340. Someone's got his batting average up to 300. Yeah, the first night of the series, the new calibration of the radar gun here had uh, left handers about five or six miles an hour faster than uh, it actually was. They've recalibrated. <laughs> I think he dropped to my bat. <laughs> Yelich was, I think, in the line of that one. That one looked like it bounced off the dirt, and Gordon got a piece of it. That was Ichiro like, or JT Riddle like. Oh, he's going like that right now. He's got it going on. Start seeing the baseball, you start. Hey, listen, you can do anything. Oh yeah, yes. it did. It's, it's amazing. That's why he's laughing? Any way you can. If I'm a betting man, he probably throws the same pitch. Did not. I'm not a betting man. Look at the lefty bats. Gordon, Yelich, Bohr. And all those uh, doing damage against Mike fulton -Evich. Swanson handles a couple here in the seventh. Of course, like cold hard fact, all time on Father's Day, Marlins are one over, Braves are 15 under. This is the first time they've met on Father's Day. Huh. The holiday was recognized in 
And now, is that in baseball or, or for good? I think for good. Really? Yeah. I, I was surprised what I was actually contemplating right here silently. It's been around for 45 years. Is that? I guess for, for you and me, it was always part of childhood. So. Right. So official, became an official holiday. When did Mother's Day come online? Hopefully a lot sooner than Father's Day. I would think. But I don't know the answer to that. Stan pulls one on the ground. Ruiz in the dirt. Adams digs it out. Sam Freeman goes one, two, three in the seventh. Monday, and we invite those who serve us to join us uh, for a ball game. Marlins and Nationals, active, retired U.S. military personnel, veterans, firemen, and police receive two complimentary tickets and showing their official service IDs at the Marlins Park ticket office. For more info, visit marlins.com slash promotions. In Atlanta, Seventh inning stretch. God bless America. Big crowd on hand. Miami finds themselves in a familiar spot. They were there just last evening. Two run lead. Although the difference here is that the Marlins still have their starting pitcher on the mound. Last night it was a, a marathon of relievers that were trying to hold down the fort after just four innings of Jeff Locke. Tomorrow you got uh, Roark and Nicolino going. Isn't it an interesting comparison? You know, we'll, we'll use words like in control today because the ring is still out there with the two nothing lead and yesterday it was holding on. Yet it was the same depth, you know, the same same situation two run lead. It's funny how the game kind of dictates what we anticipate to, ha to happen. Now Brian Snicker has been ejected. The groundskeeper is not running the team. That was him briefing the umpire not on the lineup but on rain in the area. You can see the clouds above. Kurt Suzuki is a, a ways away from joining AARP but let's get to know him nonetheless. Why Luku we talked about that University of Hawaii. Offered him a full ride. One of 41 to get to Major League Baseball from the Aloha States. Who's your favorite Hawaiian yeah. baseball player? Is it uh, Ron? Was it Ron Darling was born there? Wasn't yes, it? that's right. Sid Fernandez. No, no, Ron, a long time. Um, Shane probably, Victorino. I would probably go Ron Darling. Now, 
If you were offered a full ride scholarship to the University of Hawaii, I would assume, much like me and probably the rest of us, we'd all be like, I got a full ride scholarship to the University of Hawaii. I'm gone, right? He, on the other hand, was like, no thanks, because he's from there. Well, he also had a shot at playing at Cal State Fullerton, though, which has a better baseball program. That's true. He's in the College World Series this year. And it was a pretty good choice because he won the Johnny Bench Award as the nation's top collegiate catcher. Understandable. And he lines one into left field for a base hit. Well, the Braves able to get the leadoff guy on the last two innings. Of course, in the sixth, big double play by Urania. Turn the circumstances back around and into his favor. Suzuki leads off the seventh inning with a base hit, but he is also at the bottom of the Braves lineup. Swanson and Ruiz due to due to hit. David Phelps, Miami's pen. In that comeback in yesterday's ball game, the Braves did their damage against Brad Ziegler. Against Kyle Bearclaw, and of course at the end, in the ninth and the tenth against AJ Ramos. All right, I think they'd love to get another inning from Urania today. Five and a third innings from the Marlins bullpen yesterday. Eleven <laughs> hits, five earned runs. They get one more inning, I think they'd be real happy. Little floater down the line. Good effort. I don't know what the catch probability was or what his uh, 63 pursuit angle was. Yeah. That would have been the definition of a shoestring catch. Wouldn't you agree? Down there by the shoestrings. I'm not sure what his efficiency would be. And he certainly had it in his sights. The more I see the the net above the dugouts here, the more it makes a lot of sense. We've seen in this series, and, and this is a new ballpark, and it's extremely close to the plate. Mm -hmm. We've seen balls just scream into that net in this series. Liner, right center. That's trouble. Stan trying to cut it off. Does. Swanson around first. Holds there. Braves at the corners. Hits by the Braves here in the seventh inning. We're in a little bit of a mess. Rania, almost unhittable all afternoon. That's a slider down in the zone. See the tumbling action. It's not his fastball. Swanson stays on it, drives it the other way. Sets this thing up nicely for the Braves. And you got Ruiz, who was lined out and struck out. Don Mattingly on his way out. Three pitches for Jose Urania, and it looks like that's it. Urania exits 2 0 Miami. Braves threatening in the eighth.
Detectives at the Corners. A Corona Light Marlins watch party is Friday night Sandbar Sports Grill, Coconut Grove. And that is Friday, June 30th at 8.10. Music by DJ Vertigo. Billy the Marlin will be there. Giveaway, prizes, food, all that stuff. Marlins.com slash appearances. Sandbar Sports Grill, Coconut Grove. David Phelps into the ball game. This is his third appearance this series. He's pitched in all three ball games. Nice outing yesterday. Got himself in a little bit of trouble. Runner in scoring position. Able to get it done. Solid inning. He's strapped with a bit of a pickle here this afternoon. Runners on first and third and nobody out. Braves are very good at this. They are very good at coming from behind. Even though they haven't won a lot of games this year, a good number of their games have either been walk-offs or last at bat wins. They've got four walk-off wins of their 14 here at Sun Trust Park. It's almost an incredible number when you think about it. Ruiz, left field, and that's deep. Azuna in fair territory makes the catch. Runner from first tags. And he's in there. Braves get a run, and they move the runner up. Well, a deep fly ball to left. Mizuna not able to get himself into the best throwing position. A nice base running by Dansby Swanson. Give him credit. It's an easy read for a base runner at first base. So you watch Azuna slide over towards the line. Now watch, he's going to have to backtrack right there as that ball fades back towards the field. Still a good, strong throw. But for Dansby Swanson, this is an easy, easy read. He runs back, tags. He can almost get three quarters of the way down to second base. And if he doesn't believe he'll make it, he can still retreat and probably make it back in time. Johan Camargo. And Phelps gets strike one. Braves came roaring back from a 7-3 deficit in yesterday's ball game. Margos had a nice series for seven. has to knock it down. If there was one thing to point to for the Marlins this year. Sixth, seventh, and eighth inning has been a challenge. Well, it's been inconsistent. And there's been moments where it's been good. I mean, let's remember, A.J. Ramos has been outstanding in the closers role. First blown save yesterday. There have been the inconsistencies, and that's it's as simply stated as that because liner, and that's in for a hit, and that's going to tie the ball game. A pretty deliberate approach by a couple of left-handed bats from the Braves. It's David Phelps not looking to pull the baseball, stay inside the baseball, and go the other way. Another rolling breaking ball right there. See those eyes staying right through it. This was his intent all along. Going to drop it in front of Marcelo Zuna. And it's B. Swanson, who had some good base running right there, set that run up by getting himself into scoring position. And again, the Braves are good at this. Coming back late innings. And you had mentioned uh, some of the struggles with the bullpen in these later innings. Talking about the inconsistencies. Different guys in different roles. Well, really almost all, you know, the first two months of the season. That's, all, that's also been part of it. You know, manager Don Mattingly's had to get the hot guys more towards that eighth inning. And, you know, early on, Phelps, he was in the role. And then he kind of played himself out of it, pitched himself out of it. Now he's back. 
Of course, he's being you know used extensively. This is his third appearance in the series because of some of the other things that are going on in the bullpen. So you got to take all those things into consideration. And Ciarte. And it's a ball and a strike. Both runs go on the line of Jose Ureña. Six innings, three hits, two runs. Well, the challenge here now is keep it even. center field. Yelich has it. Runner doesn't stop. On his way to third and the throw. Safe. Camargo didn't hesitate. They challenged Yelich's arm. It was a close play. The hop kicked up for Dietrich and that may have allowed Camargo to get under. Base hit by Enciarte in center field. Again another breaking ball. You see it right there up in the zone. Phelps, he's been up today. She does a nice job getting himself into position, but his momentum moving away from third base. That's what Camargo saw. As soon as he reads that, he's saying, okay, listen, he's got momentum working away. There's no way that throw is as strong as it normally could be. I'm going to take the chance here and try and get over to third base. And then you see the bounce. High bounce right there. Dietz has got to wait for it to come down. Able to get in. That snapped an 0 for 12 for Inciarte. The Braves in this inning have four hits and a sacrifice fly. And all the, the nice work by Jose Ureña has come undone here in the bottom of the seventh. You got Brandon Phillips who had two key at bats late in yesterday's game. Phillips came into this series hot. Big day yesterday, including the game winner, the walk-off winner. The tenth. Through his numbers against David Phelps in his career, four for nine with a K. The situation he's looking for at least a deep fly ball. See if he takes the similar approach to hitters in front of him. Trying to get Phelps he up in the zone. Miami's bullpen active again. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Nick Wickren in Miami's pen. Two hits off of Urania. Two hits and a sacrifice fly off of Phelps. Braves. Trying to grab the lead for the first time in the ballgame. Phelps misses down low. We got a lefty bat in Markakis on deck. Down the middle in the 3-0 pitch. Back into the count. 
Still has to make another one here. Justin Moore holding Inciarte on at first. Ciarte, Camargo across the diamond. 3 1. And this hole gets deeper. Bags are loaded. Marcakis is the hitter. Don Mattingly has seen enough. He is a Going to go to the bullpen and get Nick Wickren with the bags loaded and one out. The lead is lost. The game is tied. And the Braves still threatening here with one out and the bags loaded. Back to Atlanta after this. You can save up to 50% off tickets for every Tuesday regular season home game. And of course, the Nationals this Tuesday. Go to Marlins.com, save big with half price Tuesdays. This a Sunday, Father's Day in Atlanta. Miami's 2 0 lead has evaporated. The Braves they have knocked David Phelps out of the ball game. Third pitch to work in the inning is Nick Wickren. Nick Markakis, the hitter, infield playing for two. The inning started with Jose Ureña throwing a, uh, a one hit shutout, but he gave up two hits and he was done. Phelps gave up two hits, a walk, and a sack fly. Markakis, that's a fair ball. Down the line it goes. That'll score Camargo. That'll score Inciarte holding at second is Phillips. And Atlanta not only has come back, they have a two run lead. Arcake is looking to be aggressive right away, gets a pitch to his liking. Talked about time and time again his approach at home plate, line to line. Left field line to right field line. Fastball away. Go the other way. Shoots it down into the corner. Gives the Braves a 4-2 lead here in the seventh. And the dangerous Matt Kemp is up. So Miami's pen, who lost a, a four-run lead. In yesterday's ball game, has lost a two-run lead here. You go back. 
back to last Sunday. Remember the Marlins in Pittsburgh had a sizable lead disappear as well. Actually, that was last Saturday in Pittsburgh. Count 0 and 2 on the dangerous Kemp. Kemp may be an all star. He's an all star twice. A swing and a miss. And down he goes. Two outs. And the other guy that uh, could be an all star is coming to the plate. That's Matt Adams. Second inning hit by a pitch. Fly ball and a strikeout to go along with it. Phillips is picked and out. Dietrich with a tag. Nice work by Whitgren to recognize that and get the out. But the damage done. The Braves lead it now 4 2. The best thing you probably ever told me is to never settle for anything and you know, I try to live by that as much as possible. Happy Father's Day, Flash Senior. You deserve it. Have a great day and enjoy it. Very nice, of course, to uh, his father, Tom, a longtime pitcher, decorated in Major League Baseball. 4-2 here. Braves uh, with some changes. Johan Camargo's going to stay in the ball game. And he'll be at third base. Rio Ruiz is gone. And into the bullpen go the Braves. Jose Ramirez takes over for Sam Freeman. This was a Mike Fulton Evich start. He went six. He was on the hook for the loss. Freeman now in line for the win. Eighth inning, Yelich Ozuna bore against Ramirez. That you see what he brings to the table. High velocity from Ramirez. Yelich two for three today. His hit streak now at nine straight. out as well. Three and oh. 
That's down low. Yelich walks. Good start to this eighth inning. Four pitch walk for Yelich. Big guys up there. Tying run. Marcelo Zuna. Well, Miami will try to take a page out of the Braves book and come from behind. Ozuna still looking for his first hit of the series. He's walked four times. And the Atlanta Braves have shown all series long a disinterest in giving Ozuna anything to hit. Well, they have just tried to bait him almost to into, into expanding his strike zone. Ozuna left field that ball's hit well and it's deep and it's gone and it's tied. It's 4-4 and Ozuna hits his 18th of the season. Well dare I say he was due he responds boy oh boy another one of these late game quality at bats from Marcel Ozuna. And oh by the way turning around velocity impressive. Ramirez missed on all five pitches of the inning and Ozuna was sitting one spot. He should have been. That's exactly right. You're squaring up a fastball and something that you like. You even see him step to it. Look, cheated just a little bit to the inside part of the plate right there. Wanted to get that fastball in, gets it, and doesn't miss it. Always the key. Here is Bohr. Bohr to right center. And Markekis is there and he makes a catch. Bohr trying to jump on a pitch. On a two hit day. And that's the first out. Here comes Dietrich. So it's 4 4. Marlins got the lead, lost the lead. Now tie the game. Start over here in the eighth. <laughs> there you go. Why not? This series a game apiece. This game four runs apiece. Why not? Happy Father's Day, everybody. It's been an entertaining series. A lot of back and forth between these two ball clubs. Look out. See, and there is another great example of that net that is up behind the uh, Braves dugout. That bat was headed for the seats. Sure was. Thinks you got somebody in the Braves dugout. Hit Chuck Hernandez. Chuck's okay. Moving on. There's Chuck. He's tough. <laughs> Tampa guy. Is that, is that how you measured it? By the ability to take a, a bat off the back? I like it. Off the glove. Dietrich hustling the first. He's going to get a hit. Sure he is. Ramirez had his feet tangled up after delivering the pitch and he never was able to square up. Yeah, I'm seeing it in first view as this was going on. You're almost thinking touch the ball because he's off balance. See how off balance he was. He wants Ramirez to get a little leather on that. Obviously not come up with it, but you can almost see that if that ball gets through, Swanson probably has a play at first base, knocking it down right there. Ball ends up in no man's land and Dietz gets himself a base hit. So here's Ellis. Dietrich's at first. There's one out. Ramirez a scoreless inning in yesterday's ball game. One one. It's Miami's catcher. Called strike Ellis's reaction. And it's 0 2. We don't typically see that type of reaction from catchers and home plate umpires, but remember his last at bat, he was rung up on a pitch that was a good, I don't know, couple of inches inside. Ramirez out there. Phillips's turn is in time. And the Braves get those two outs, but Miami on another Marcelo Zuna home run has tied this game.
Stay up until the sixth. Miami got two. Atlanta with four in the seventh. And now Marcelo Zuna with a two-run homer in a 4-4 game. And a battle of the bullpens now. Nick Wittgren stays on for the fish. You see, the Marlins opened this ball game with three guys in the lineup with 17 home runs. And Ozuna continues to pad an all-star resume. Matt Adams, Kurt Suzuki, Dansby Swanson. Well, Matt Adams was up when Brandon Phillips was uh, essentially picked off second base. Back in the seventh inning. 0 for 2 on the afternoon. Mets beat the Nationals behind Jacob deGrom who homered in the game and beat the Nationals 5-1. Adams rolls it. Wittgren's over. And there's your out in the eighth. Of course, at Stetson University, deGrom was a shortstop to begin his career, so he's handled the bat a little bit. Suzuki gets comfortable in the box. He's one for two. Was hit by a pitch in the second. Suzuki, and we had noted. And he ended up at Cal State Fullerton. He helped lead them to a World Series championship back in 2004. Ended up having a, the game winning hit in the championship game against the Texas Longhorns. A swing and a miss. And Wittgren, the former Purdue Boilermaker, strikes him out. Nicely done by Nick. Going to elevate after getting a fastball by him on the inside part of the plate. Goes upstairs to pick up the strikeout. Dansby Swanson. On a one for three afternoon. I gotta be honest with you. In April, when we started talking about coming here in June, mm -hmm. I was expecting home run derby. Right. Like the old black and white home run derby. But having watched three games here, oh. it, the ball doesn't seem to carry. I mean, it does not the way that not the way that April led us to believe it was going to. I think a lot of people around baseball thought the ball was going to be flying out of here like it was going to be one of the top five home run hitters parks in the National League. Right. It's not Cincinnati. It's no. not Philadelphia. Well, you remember the conversation we were even having. Let's remember this Marlins team's got some serious boppers in the lineup that we were having with the Marlins back in April. We we're asking why is the ball flying out of, of Marlins Park. Maybe it's an early season thing. Maybe it's partly the weather. I don't know. But, you know, very interesting. I mean, the one thing everybody raves about here is it's great backdrop, great place to see the ball. But what we've seen so far in this series is there's a lot of hits out there. Home runs? I don't know yet. Swanson takes out. Bottom eight, 4-4. Four, four.
Would you say that Turner Fields was a fair ballpark in terms of hitters pitchers mix. Uh, I would say it was in my opinion it was more of a hitters ballpark. I, I would kind of compare it to this but more in the sense that the gaps were bigger. You had more territory as an outfielder right? it's center fielder one of the tougher center fields to play. That's why Andrew Jones was incredible. Just incredible run as their center fielder through my my era. He did a marvelous job out there because it was one of the biggest left centers and right centers that you would find in baseball. 390 to their gaps. Nick Wickren goes one two three through the Braves here in the eighth. Nicely done on to the ninth 4 four game. Braves home for the fish long home stand it starts with a Justin Nicolino Tanner Roark start Nicolino gets just his fourth start for the fish Roark been in that rotation from day one Nationals obviously a first place team in the National League East Jim Johnson who uh, was in the ball game last night mm -hmm. pitched a, a scoreless inning in relief looked good is in here for the night yeah batting average against you see it 206 on the season has been very good 32 strikeouts in just over 28 innings 345 ERA has blown four saves this is not a save opportunity lots of ground balls JT Riddle goes after the first pitch and that's an out. Each row coming up. Toyota brings you this inside look. Another port of call for each row. Most ballparks played in since 1913. So he's two behind Adrian Beltre. It's going to be tough to catch him. He's going to need to stick around a few years or maybe have another one of those specialty games. Like uh, he did last year. And Fort Bragg, maybe, um, maybe a specialty game in Japan. That would be a specialty game. Yeah, how about it? Although he's played in all those ballparks, right? So I guess you're right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, I didn't think about that. <laughs> Breaking ball strike. But he, he played. He played in the Tokyo Dome, which is probably where that game would be. Right. He played in the Tokyo Dome as a member of the Seattle Mariners. I, I believe that's true. I, I believe they opened against uh, Oakland over there. That one foul back. And the counts 0 2. Ichiro, though, has had a nice run. His bat all of a sudden has come to life. You see the average at 226. He stays alive there. He's got 11 pinch hits on the season. That leads all of the big leaguers. Getting it done. Seven for his last 10, in fact. For a long stretch, I think it was about an 0 for 9. He's now 7 for his last 10. When you have a six game hit streak with just 11 at bats, it's amazing. Right. <laughs> Counts you know, one and two. Well, you know what? It, you know what? You, having played the role myself, 
for a handful of years here at the major league level you're thinking there'd be a few more starts in there when you get that hot even as a pinch hitter. Fortunately the circumstances are what they are with the outfield here with the Marlins great production in left center and right right now. Foul tip and it's held that's a strikeout. Gordon, who is two for four. And Johnson looks good. Marlins getting two off of Jose Ramirez in the eighth. On an Ozuna two run homer. On a strike for D. Average sits at 293 now. Drew Steckenrider, AJ Ramos. Last thing Johnson wants to do is walk Gordon and give him a shot at, at stealing second. Looks like a pretty good pitch. Gordon will take it though, and he's on his way to first. Yeah. He is a weapon anywhere on the bases. It's a really close pitch right there, and it looks like he may have gotten one. So it was a 3-1 pitch right there. Well, that brings Stanton up. Giancarlo 0 for 4. He's not had great swings today. Struck out twice. Popped out, bounced out. Gordon runs. Suzuki's throw is high. And D. Gordon swipes his 25th base. And that continues that trend. Talk about the confidence he has on the base pass right now. Great jump right there. You get in underneath the tag. The runner in scoring position certainly applies some pressure out there. Jim Johnson now has to deal with Giancarlo Stanton with a runner in scoring position. Just tightens that margin. Well, now that counts two and one. Let's see what Stanton gets. Breaking ball, and he popped it up. Fires his bat in frustration. It's been a series of pop ups, and Stanton visibly upset. And over at first base, Miami comes up empty in the ninth.
Florida is brought to you by Southwest. Transparency, low fares, nothing to hide. By Jeep, get great deals on the Jeep lineup at the Jeep Spring Clearance event. And by your South Florida Honda dealers. 4-4 ball game, bottom nine. And the Marlins go to their bullpen and bring out the rookie. Drew Steckenrider. Hard, hard throwing right hander. First appearance this series in Atlanta. All indications from what I've seen, unfazed by the circumstances. 4-4 ball game here in the ninth. They'll come out throwing strikes. He's got Lane Adams up there as a pinch hitter. Then you've got Camargo and Inciarte. Marlins first saw Stecken Ryder in Oakland. He made his major league debut there. 26 year old and he's from this Atlanta area. Adams to left. Ozuna. Makes a catch. That's before he got to the University of Tennessee. He was a high schooler here in the Atlanta area. No doubt he's got a live arm. I've already seen 99 today. Marlins live after the game. Jessica Blaylock, Preston Wilson. Clubhouse reaction. John Manningly meets the press. Tennessee volunteer delivers outside. Eighth round pick by the Marlins in 2012. Johan Camargo for Atlanta. He had a big hit, RBI single. Atlanta got all four of their runs in the seventh. Stick and Ryder. Big kid. 6 5, 2 15. Dietrich got a piece of it, and that's it. Some of the toughest plays for a third baseman are those little shots from lefties down the third baseline. You see this, saw this from Marquez a little bit earlier. I'm not changing it. I'll give it a couple seconds. I think you'll end up being right. And they just changed it. There you go. But of course, here in the ninth inning, that's a winning run. And we've talked about the Braves. They don't have a winning record. They're seven under, but they are very good at this. And that's winning late games. Yesterday, the Braves with their 10th win in their final at bat. Look at that. Amazingly, the Phillies have 10. The Phillies have only won 22 games.
fastball from Steckbrenner. Oh, two. Into center. Round second headed for third is Camargo. And in Ciarte with a big hit here. The Braves 90 feet away from another walk off win. And look who's walking to the batter's box once again. Brandon Phillips got it done yesterday. Take another look back at it. Down low zone right there and able to line it in the center field. He's going to get another crack at it here again today. For Steckenrider, a two strike pitch right there. It's one thing that he's going to have to figure out. Major League level is that equalizer. 97 and 99 is great, but you can't come in and only throw 97 99. Got to keep big league hitters honest. Ciarte right there. Able to set this situation up with two strikes. Your Don Manning is making his way out to the mound. This is more of a strategy, strategy. visit than anything. No one throwing in Miami's pen. That's how I knew. <laughs> now this could be. I'm going to bring an outfielder in and play five infielders here. Right. Here comes Marcel Azuna right now as we speak, making his way to the infield. So Ozuna's going to come in. This is going to move Yelich and Stanton into the gaps. Left center field and right center field. Definitely some vulnerability to the lines. You see this with nobody out, but with one out, you still have the shot at a double play to get out of the inning. Right. The gamble here is that you put Ozuna in a spot where he may have to turn a double play if a ball ends up around the bag at second. Marcel's going to kind of camp out at second base. In my mind, I'd almost swing Yelich around and have Steckenrider stay on the outside part of the plate. He throws so hard. Just to shorten up the coverage out there in the outfield, there's a huge gap in obviously center field. And now, the, and then now the Marlins switch Ozuna and Gordon, although they're too close to each other right now. Yep. So Miami has five infielders, second rider to Phillips, and it's in. They're still trying to get Ozuna in the right spot. One out. Phillips has walked his last two times up. Kekis is on deck. It's 3 0. Oh. Well, this could be quite deliberate on the Marlins' part. A strike. And you still have a base open. Just because it's second base doesn't mean you can't pitch around Brandon Phillips here. Create a force at any base with Marcakis. Up the middle, and no one gets it. And the Braves walk off. The Marlins had two infielders up there. Gordon was at the bag, and he never went for the ball. Stay 
Eichenreiter got the ground ball. And the Braves walk off. Now, similar circumstances for Brandon Phillips here this afternoon, able to come through once again, almost to the exact same spot. Well, the middle of the field anyway. A little top spin roller back through the middle. Good enough for the Braves to win this series. Wasn't hit very hard, just kind of hit to the right spot. Now Gordon is hoping in that case that Riddle can get it and start a double play. Riddle to his left. I think the key there is that Gordon lined up pre-pitch on the first base side of second. Right. Well, in that situation right there, you're trying to turn two. It's as simple as that. You've got to get a double play. The runner from third's coming home. So it's got to be quick. And I think both thought the other was going to be the quicker route. Unfortunately, the ball gets through. And the Braves walk off for the second game in a row, win the series. And for the Fish, tough loss in Atlanta. It's 5-4 final.